God bless everybody today. It is October 10th of 2024 and I found some dates and connections I wanted to bring to your attention and possibly a watch date of uh, this weekend on October 12th. Um, there's a number of events that seem to correlate to this very specific date so I just wanted to bring them to your attention. So first of all, let's bring you up to speed on what's going on here, and then we'll get into these connections that will lead up to this weekend and, and as we move into the next five years, because there is a number of things that matter as we move forward. So we've had these, um, Israel's done a lot of damage to Hezbollah and pretty much eliminated their whole uh, command structure through these uh um, walkie talkies, beepers exploding, and then they've, they've just gone in and missiled and um, attacked all these other leaders, and even the leader of Hezbollah, uh, Nezrol, has been killed. Um, and a number of the people that were coming up in the ranks that would replace these people have been killed. So they're in the process of rebuilding um, their command structure at this very moment in time. Um, Iran felt they should do a response to the leader Nezrala being killed from Hezbollah, and so they launched approximately 181 missiles into um, Israel. Now, these were all ballistic missiles. These were not just small projectiles and different things like that, as we've seen in the past. So this was a major escalation. Um, this was about twice what they saw the last time they did that 300 um, launch back a month or so ago and so this this is ramping up and so we will see a major escalation by Israel and an actual attack on Iran itself within their borders um, they just don't have a choice and they have to um, cut the head off of the snake and so the question is just how deep are they going to strike? Are they going to hit their nuclear facilities? Are they going to hit their oil structures? Um, different things like that. Um, you know, how many targets, how many proxies of Iran would be included in this? And so this could ramp up and escalate any time within days possibly because we've had the security cabinet meeting with um Biden on Iran and so they probably have a really good idea how they're going to deal uh, with this next attack and then you would also have a response probably from Iran once this attack of Israel occurs on Iran uh, probably in the next few days uh, next few weeks um, I'm possibly looking at the uh, date of October 12th of 2024 based on uh, the dates I'm seeing out here and I'll show you those connections as we move forward here. But I wanted to bring you up to date so as it stands right now everybody is waiting on um, Israel to attack Iran and this has moved your fuel prices up tremendously in the last week or so and so you probably are watching the impact of that on the pump prices um, two more things I will mention uh, before we go into these connections. Your CPI print um, that came out yesterday or today actually uh, was higher than what they thought and so your core inflation has moved up as well as they had a fairly large print of over 250,000 in the unemployment uh, numbers and so that is bad news uh, for the Fed because we're watching those, as I've said for some time, we're watching those layoffs starting to occur. Now, how much is this being impacted with the, hur the two hurricanes that just went through Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and those different areas through there? Um, we will see that impact as we move into Christmas season and this fourth quarter. So and you also have an election cycle that's getting ready to happen so there's a lot happening out here and this is going to cause all kinds of problems for the democrats as these fuel prices are moving up you have massive destruction on the ground and people are just going to even have a hard time trying to get to voting um, in these areas and so um, 
we'll see what happens in the next few weeks. We're only about a month out on the election cycle. But let's get to the connections because I think these are extremely important. And um, they include a number of different things that uh, matter to us today. So hopefully I've done a good job here. I've laid this all out on a text file. There are a number of connections here. And I'm just going to go down through the page and hopefully I put this all together and make some sense for you guys so that you can see what's coming up in the next few days, months, and the next uh, five years as we move into the Feast of Trumpets of 2029. And um, this is going to get really intense and things are going to start getting crazy out here um, as this starts to extremely break out here. And um, we just had that blood moon event on September 18th which was the Fed decision. I talked about how that's a bad omen for the markets. You're starting to watch the markets really have trouble. Um, you're also watching these bonds melt up to uh, two years around 4% and the 10 year has actually moved up about 10 basis points over that. So the uninversion has happened. That usually takes you into a recession within a month or two after that. We are watching that start to transpire in front of us. As all that is happening, on top of that, we have some this Israeli-Iranian war, and this could change the game because if Iran gets hit from Israel through their nuclear facilities or their oil structures, that is then going to send oil um, prices skyrocketing and you're going to see a similar event to what we saw approximately 50 years ago and so let's go through this and I'll sort of explain what I'm talking about so as I've talked about many many times we have a history lesson getting ready to play out in the future and we're going to watch this actually probably play out almost exactly as it happened in the past so when you go to the Sabbath, which is on a Saturday, October 6th of 1973, on 10 Tishri, we had an extremely important event that happened. We had the Yom Kippur War. This was the fourth of the uh, Arab-Israeli wars, which was initiated by Egypt and Syria on October 6th of 1973 on the Jewish holy date of Yom Kippur. It also occurred during Ramadan, and I keep talking about how Ramadan always seems to fall in these unique days. Um, you need to watch Ramadan and these um, Muslim uh, holidays also. This Ramadan is the sacred month of fasting in Islam, and it lasts until October 26th of 1973. Okay, so this was all occurring all at the same time. The war, which eventually drew in the United States and the Soviet Union into direct indirect confrontation in defense of their respective allies, was launched with the diplomatic aim of pursuing a chastened, if still undefeated, Israel to negotiate on terms more favorable to the Arab countries. Okay, at the same time all this was happening, we had those gas lines of 1973 through the 1973 oil embargo. This also happened in October 1973. The Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, announced that it was implementing a total oil embargo against the countries that supported Israel this could happen again okay i'm warning you right now if this does happen and israel would attack iran and iran would shut down let's say the strait of hormos that would sh that's a game changer on multiple levels and your fuel prices are going to skyrocket as barrels of oil go up three, four times uh, what you're seeing them now. And they're around um, $75, $80 uh, a barrel So um, for Brent. So that, that, that is a game changer. And then you would go back into those uh, terrible uh, fuel gas lines and different things that we had uh, during the 1973 uh, 
gas shortages and you had massive layoffs at the same time because nobody could get to work so it was just a really bad time for everyone so they they embargoed everybody that supported Israel during this 1973 Yom Kippur War, which began after Egypt and Syria launched a massive scale surprise attack in an ultimately unsuccessful attempt to recover the territories that they had lost to Israel during the 1967 Six Day War. And that these all all these events play hand in hand as you're going to see. It's amazing how God's calendars work with our events as we move through history. What I think is, is interesting about this is that if you take October 6th of 1973 and add 50 years, which is a jubilee or 50 years a gap of time, that takes you to October 6th of 2023. Well, the attack of Israel by Hamas was 50 years later on October 7th of 2023, the day after the end of the 50-year Jubilee cycle. If you go to the evening of October 6th of 2023 at sundown, that starts the new day on the Hebrew calendar and the attack by Hamas into Israel happened on basically October 7th. So if you go to the sundown of October 6th, that starts the new day of October 7th. And so 50 years to the day, we saw an attack by um, Hamas into um, Israel. And both of these dates were on a Sabbath. So that's interesting that um, that would occur both on a Sabbath on that very day. Now this next thing I wanted to get into was that that goes along with this date of the October 7th attack of 2023 was that prophecy I have been talking about in Daniel 10. And this is an extremely important prophecy because I had seen this a month or so prior to the actual attack and I was trying to warn people this was coming and I was trying to explain how I had found this date and how it mattered. Now I did not realize this all up, this Yom Kippur War added additional layering to this prophecy of Daniel 10. So it's just confirmation that this was all going to happen and that we probably and could have predicted the date of the October 7th attack. So if you go into Daniel 10, it talks about the third year of the King Cyrus of Persia, okay? And that's extremely important because when you go into this prophecy, it affects this last president of Iran, as you're going to see. So let's look at this real quick. We have this third year of Cyrus, the King of Persia. And Daniel has this vision during this period of time. Well, that's extremely important because if you come down and look, and I'm going to come down here real quick and then we'll go back up. If you look at the president of Iran that was just killed in that uh, helicopter crash, he was in there for three years, okay? Extremely important. So he became a president on August 3rd of 2021. He died in a helicopter crash on May 19th of 2024. He would have held office for approximately two years, uh, 290 days before his death. This is the third year of the king of Persia, as Daniel indicates, uh, Daniel 10.1 indicates. So we can see that and we can apply it to today. So I knew it was 2023. I, I knew that because I knew how long this king had been in place. Um, now, I didn't know the guy was going to die, um, you know, a few months later. Um, so I had no ability to understand that. But I did know that we were going to see something happen in 2023. And if you look at this date of when he gives you in this date stamp what because daniel's been mourning for three full weeks or 21 days he eats no bread he has no flesh in his mouth he drinks no wine he's fasting he's distraught he doesn't 
understand exactly what's happening, but he knows Persia is attacking his country. And then on the 24th day of the first month, which is Tishri 24, he has this vision while he's sitting along this great river uh, named Hedekiel. And so this is extremely important because if you look at this vision of Daniel of the 24th day of the month, which would end up being around September, October, based on the Hebrew Jewish calendars of 2023, those uh, dates fall on October 9th of 2023. Then if you look at the Feast of Trumpets, which starts on September 16th of 2023, which would be the start of the prophetic year of um, the Jewish calendar, Daniel has this vision. He's distressed for 21 days. Okay. We also know, and I'm going to skip down here real quick, that Michael's been fighting Persia for 21 days. Okay. So if you take the dates of the first day of the prophetic calendar of September 16th of 2023, which was the first day of the Feast of Trumpets, and add 21 days, it falls exactly on October 7th of 2023, and the day, which is the day of the Mostak on Israel. So we have a couple ways here of verifying that we had a potential attack on this very specific day that was going to affect Israel and is still affecting them today. So I think this is extremely important because God gives you all this information. He gives you everything if we can pull it out of this book and decipher it and translate it properly. So if you take September 16th to 2023 at 21 days, um, that Michael's been fighting Persia, that takes uh, October 7th, 2023. So right after this attack of Hamas, Israel declares war, a state of war against Hezbollah on October 8th, 2023, after Hezbollah ramps up missile attacks on Israel the morning of October 8th of 2023. This is the biz biggest escalation of Israel Hezbollah war since the 2006 Lebanon war. Now I want to make one comment here because this attack by Hamas was actually supposed to be an attack by Hezbollah into the area of um, uh, Galilee. And so this didn't quite go as everybody had planned, and Hamas actually preempted the strike and went in before Hezbollah decided they were going to do it. And so now you have Israel literally destroying that whole front area um, so that they can't do an invasion into that area of Galilee. And so that's why you're seeing most of the concentration of uh, weapons and things that they're, uh, you know, bombs and missiles and things that they're attacking Hezbollah with in that very specific area because they were afraid that they were going to do a secondary invasion, um, which was, this plan was decimated because Israel took out their uh, command structure of Hezbollah. So once they killed Nez uh, Nezrallah and all these commanders, they really had no ability to pull it back together to do this additional attack on Israel through this secondary invasion. And so Israel is in the process of preemptively striking them so that they can't. So I just want you to understand sort of what's happening there. Now, if you look at that date of Tishri 24 that Daniel's talking about up in here, then you'll realize that that would actually end up on October 9th of 2024. And that's just a couple days after this attack. And so it's my speculation based on how he's laying this out that he was watching this ramp up from Iran and their proxies he knew this was getting ready to happen he saw the attack and then a few days after this we saw what gabriel and michael come down give him the vision michael then goes back and attacks iran and continues that attack and then at the end of daniel 
uh, 10 we see who come in the king of Grisha which is Turkey which is getting ready to come in around January then on October 9th of 2023 Israel declares war on Hamas and we see that invasion of Israel into uh, Palestine and the start of that war in Gaza now I want to bring up this very specific date now I do not know if anything will happen on this very specific date but it's coming up on Saturday during the Sabbath and so I think we better be concerned about it now this would start on Friday night and work through Saturday night because the Sabbath and the way the Jewish calendars are set up but look at this so you had that Yom Kippur War on the Sabbath on October 6th of 1973 on 10 Tishri. You're going to have a similar event on October 12th, 50 years later, on 10 Tishri on Yom Kippur. So I'm concerned that you're going to see a potential attack or breakout on October 12th of 2024, either a direct attack from Israel on Iran on this very specific date, which would then ramp up that and expand that whole war over there, or we potentially would see Hezbollah regroup or potentially Iran and all its proxies do an attack on Israel to preempt them from attacking them. And so we have a number of things going. My best bet would we would see Israel, because they've been preparing since October 1st, and so they've had about a week and a half to get ready for this, that we would probably see Israel literally launch a pretty substantial attack on proxies of Iran which would include Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis as well as Iran itself and possibly you would see in the country of Iran bombings of nuclear and oil facilities and then we would have to then wait for a response of Iran and its proxies to determine how they would react to this um, extremely strong attack by Israel as they've already been decimated through their command structure through all these events that have happened in the last few weeks or the last month so I do not know if anything will happen but there is a high probability with everything going on out here that it could or it could happen just shortly after that so we'll see how that happens um, I am concerned it is a Yom Kippur Day of Atonement on a Sabbath so you have a double portion um, being handed out on this very specific date as you did back here and so that could be a bad omen as we move forward it can be a good omen or a bad omen depending on the time now as we get into this next section uh, we're going to switch to um, the Jubilee years. Okay, and I know a lot of people don't talk about the Jubilee years, but when you're looking at prophecy, you need to look at three things, um, especially these three things that I'm looking at in this build that I'm doing right now. The 70 weeks of Daniel, the Jubilee years, which are a 50-year um, slotted period of time, and the seven-year Shemitah cycle that all work hand-in-hand together and so all these events literally amplify each other and they don't um, mitigate each other in any way shape or form they actually work in tandem with each other so I wanted to show you this connection and how this is going to affect us into 2024 which we are here as we move into 2025 so you had this Balfour Declaration. This Balfour Declaration was a public statement issued by Britain or the British government in 1917 during the First World War announcing its support of the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people. And so, look, at that point, the Jewish people don't have a, a country yet. 
They have not been nationalized as they would be in May 14th of 1948. So all this is starting to culminate into that event happening. So just realize where this is leading into. Also, during this very specific time, you had World War I and the destruction of around this time through 1923, the destruction of the Ottomans through the Ottoman Empire and then the breakup of the Middle East and the renaming of all these countries and also the segregation of the land to all these different groups. And so this is extremely important that we understand our history. Now this declaration was contained in a letter dated on November 2nd of 1917 from the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to Lord Rothschild, a leader of the British Jewish community for transmission to the Zionist Federation of Great Britain and Ireland. The text was a declaration was published in the press on uh, 9th uh, November of uh, 1917. Now 50 years later we had what we called the Six Day War and uh, we talked about the Six Day War up here okay um, when we were talking about this up here and how this affected the Six Day War here okay during this uh, 1973 uh, oil embargo. So this all works hand in hand. I just want you to realize that I'm trying to put all these connections together for you guys so you can see it. So you have 50 years later from 1917 to 1967, a 50 year jubilee gap of time, a six day war. The previous Arab Israeli war in which Israel had captured and occupied Arab territories, including the Sinai, uh, Sinai Peninsula and the Golan Heights, was followed by years of sporadic fighting. Anwar Sadat, who became the Egypt's president shortly after the War of Attrition uh, through 1969 and 1970 ended, made overtures to reach a peaceable settlement if, in accordance with the United Nations Resolution 242, Israel would return the territories it had captured. Israel rejected those terms and the fighting developed into a full-scale war in 1973, which is the Yom Kippur War. And we just talked about the Yom Kippur War and how 50 years later we could see that happen and break out on this weekend on October 7th or October 12th because it's a 50 year gap of time. Okay, now you have this next 50 year gap of time between 1967 and 2017. And what happened on this very specific date? The United States recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. On December 6th of 2017, the United States of America officially recognized Jerusalem as the capital city of the state of Israel. American President Donald Trump, who signed the presidential proclamation, also ordered the relocation of the American diplomatic mission to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv, constituting what is now the Embassy of the United States in Jerusalem, which was established on the grounds of the former Consulate General of the United States in Jerusalem. Prime, uh, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed this decision and praised the announcement by the Trump administration. Now, Trump's decision was rejected by the vast majority of world leaders, especially through the United Nations Security Council held an emergency meeting on December 7th, uh, Pearl Harbor, I believe is that date. Crazy, the dates this, this all happens on, where the 14 out of 15 members condemned it, but the motion was overturned by the U.S. veto power, and so we bullied our way in and said we're going to do this regardless of whether you like it or not. United Nations or United Kingdoms, France, Japan, Italy, and Sweden were among the countries who criticized Trump's decision at the meeting. So even your major allies are not happy with your decision here. What's interesting is on this date, around this date of December 6th of 2017, 
just prior to that we started to see what we call the four solar eclipses between 2017 2024 which takes you to today and it matters we saw some really crazy uh, movements especially over the united states and i'm going to explain those as we move forward and so these uh, four total solar eclipses between 2017 and 2024 will matter to us today so on august 21st of 2017 we had the first of the four solar eclipses all these eclipses land between 2017 and 2024 um, that last one is actually on April 8th of 2024, and we'll get into that here in a second. That was an interesting uh, number of events that occurred on this very specific date, and I want to go over these in detail. So that's why I want to bring this back up. Um, so you had one eclipse on August 21st of 2017. You had a second eclipse on June 10th of 2021. A third eclipse on October 14th of 2023 and then you had this huge astrological events that occurred on April 8th of 2024 which is Nisan once which is the very first day of the Jewish calendar so this is extremely important so on April 8th of 2024 you had the fourth of the four solar eclipses that occurred between 2017-2024 and how will this affect us as we move forward in this country as we get through 2024 into the next five years this is going to impact us so on this last date due to these four other or these three other eclipses or four total eclipses that went over this country it creates an a over the united states possibly an anarchy sign so not only did you have this huge A form over the United States, you had two X's that formed over Texas and the New Madrid fault line around Missouri, Illinois area here, which could impact us because if you go back in the history of 1918, that was a devastating earthquake that radiated all the way up through Chicago and through this whole area through here. And if you get something like a, you know, 8, 9, 10 earthquake, which could happen because those earthquakes back then were 8 and 9 level earthquakes, that would be devastating, especially to today because we're a much more highly populated um, area of people through um, this area. And it actually radiated all the way up through Chicago. So if you take that gap of period down this way you can see that this is going to affect a huge area if that happens you also have to uh, think about yellowstone out here and how that super volcano could affect us so you had the large a uh, form over the united states um, you also had it cross over seven cities named nineveh this is extremely important because there's a couple other areas of the world that could be impacted by this and the one that I'm mostly concerned about is around the northern portion of Iraq so I listed the cities that actually crossed it actually went over one city in Canada in the province of Nova Scotia and then it brought me back to northern Iraq and this issue between Turkey and the Kurds and how that's going to affect us up there because you're talking about the Daniel 8 prophecy where the Kurds get forced to align with Iran and then Turkey comes over and smashes them completes Daniel 8 once Persia is absorbed into those 10 nations that Turkey's building to go against Israel we, then you would see an attack on Israel approximately around March of 2026 and that's interesting because we keep hitting these march of 2024 2025 2026 which all falls around ramadan and all these other uh passover and different dates that uh happen around that very specific times so this is a governmental area in northern iraq that will be impacted 
as we move into the end days, as the Middle East is getting inflamed, as it works through the Kurds through Daniel 8, you're going to see these areas impacted. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Also, this area has a lot of Turkmen or Turkish populations in it, and they're being affected by the Kurds. And so I just want you to realize that this is all impacting us and is happening at this very moment in time. You also had a devil comet um, visible between April 8th and April 22nd of 2024, which I thought was going to put us into a potential civil war and potential issue during this election cycle as we move forward, as you watch um, the global markets melt down and you move into unemployment, massive unemployment stagflation, as well as hyperinflation as oil prices are going to start to skyrocket up as uh, we move forward in the next few weeks or months. Um, also on April 8th of 2024, we had a six planet conjunction alignment over the planet, including the sun and the moon. Massive alignment with a lot of power going on there and a huge sign from God that things are getting ready to change in our world. So this next section is getting a little more complicated. So guys, put your thinking hats on. I want to try to break this down and show you how the 50 year jubilee the 70 week prophecy of Daniel and the seven year Shemitah cycle all work hand in hand and you can break them down and see how this lays out as we move forward into the future. So hopefully I can make some sense of this and hopefully I've laid it out properly so it does make sense. So let's look at Joshua 1 verse uh, 1 through 9. Now I'm not going to go through the verses. I just want to give you the context of what's happening. Moses has just passed. Um, they walked through the desert for 40 years. Um, Joshua is getting ready. It's being told by God that he's getting ready to lead the new generation because the old generation has perished at this moment in time. And so he's getting ready to take the new uh generation of the Israelis across the Jordan River into the promised land of Canaan and that's when he basically tells them to go in and basically kill everything because they're Canaanites um, and I mean everything and um, that actually turns out bad because they don't do what God says. Um, if you look at today's date of 2025 or as we move into this new year the very first day of the Jewish calendar is March 30th of 2025, or Nisan 1. Now, these 50-year Jubilee calendar uh, sections are hard to track down because nobody uses the Jubilee years anymore um, in the Hebrew calendars. They were uh, stopped centuries ago. So you have to sort of calculate through time, and when they happen last... Uh, when they would occur and so if you look at that and how I went through that and I'm not going to go through that whole process because it's extensive um, I believe that the Jubilee year ends on October 2nd of 2024 or just occurred and that we would start a new Jubilee year around March 30th of 2025 because it happens approximately six months later also, if you look at that video I did of Ezekiel 26 verse 1 where you see that date stamp where you have a possible attack of Tyre, Lebanon by Turkey of March 30th of 2025. And actually if you go into the paradigm of March 30th of 2026, that's when we see the signing of the covenant of death with the nations against Israel and the nations that um, support Israel. And so, and that would then start your 1260 days to the Feast of Trumpets of September 10th of 2029. On that very first day of the Feast of Trumpets, that would take you into 2030 on the Jewish Hebrew calendar, the prophetic calendars. So, you need to understand that all these things work hand in hand. And so as I walk through these next few steps here, you're going to see that God 
is a perfect mathematician. He he doesn't fudge any numbers and all of it makes sense if you know how to put it together. So if you take the date of 2025 AD, which is next year, and you add the 1406 BC, which is the day that Joshua leads the Israelis into the land of the promised land against the Canaanites, and then you sub tract um, one year uh, for the because um, you got the zero year that you have to think about if you take that into consideration it takes you to 3430 years so you take 2025 at 1406 minus your zero year that gives you 3430 3, years you take the 3430 years divide that by 49 jubilee cycles of 50 years that equals 70 okay 70 times 7 is your 490 years which takes you to the prophecy that represents in daniel um, about the 490 years that we're going to talk about as we move forward here so uh, remember a week of years in prophecy means each week is equal to seven years of actual time so when you get into the seven year week prophecy represented a, it represents a period of 490 years based on the biblical principle that prophetic scripture uses a day to represent a year and you can see that in ezekiel uh, four verse uh, four through six and numbers 14 verse 33 through 34 in daniel uh, 9 uh, verse 25 through 27 the period of seven weeks is divided into three time periods there is a seven week period to start or 49 years because you take seven times seven 62 weeks 62 times 7 is 434 years and then you have a final week because there's a cutoff period between the 62 weeks and the last week okay this last week is a seven year period of time which would be now or in the last days or in the end of days okay probably in the Shemitah cycle as we move forward between 2022 and 2029 as we get to the Feast of Trumpets of September 10th of 2029 as I'm going to show you here. If you take two, 120 Jubilees times 50 years that gives you your 6,000 creation calendar years. This is the time of Adam's date of sin in the year of uh, 3970 BC to 2030 AD Jesus was born in around 4 BC E or BC and died in 30 AD he was approximately 33.5 years old if you count back 4,000 years from Jesus's death you would then arrive at this year of 3070 BC so if you take the 3970 BC um, from the time Adam sinned, which was the day we became flesh and we could die, to the death of Jesus in 30 AD, that gives you your 4,000 year period. Then if you go from 30 AD to 2030, that's your 2,000 year period. And that would start on the Feast of Trumpets of Tishri 1, on September 10th of 2029 that would take you into the new year of 2030 also that would take you into the marriage cycle and you're cutting off the fall feast into the millennial okay extremely important because you're moving into the year 2030 and the end of the Shemitah cycle Jesus was crucified on Wednesday, Nisan 14 and 30 AD, and on the day of preparation for the high Sabbath of uh, 15th of Nisan. He died at the ninth hour around 3 p.m. at the same time that the Passover lambs were slaughtered in Jerusalem. When you get into Daniel 9, 24 through 27, we talk about the 70 weeks of Daniel. 
and you have to realize that if you take the 70 weeks and take them times 70 it ends up with a 490 year period of time that we have to be concerned about and he clearly explains this right here 70 weeks are determined upon the people and upon thy holy city so he's talking about 70 weeks times 7 is 490 completed years but you have that cut off of the 62 weeks that then takes you into that last week which is the ending period of time during the last days um, and he goes on to explain some of this. To finish the transgression, to make end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to appoint or anoint the most holy, which is Jesus. So Jesus would then come down and be among us. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, which happened in the first temple period, until the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks. Okay, now look how he lays this out. You have a seven-week period, or 49 years, then you have a three score and two weeks, which is 62 years, or 62 weeks times seven. That ends up being 434 years. And the street shall be built again, the wall, and even in troublesome time. He's talking about the rebuilding of the third temple as they move forward there. The original restoration order came from Cyrus the king of Persia. Now we were talking about Cyrus and Daniel 10 and how he was affecting all this. Now we have a new president um, there. This decree by Cyrus in 538 um, or 537 BC allowed the Jews to rebuild Jerusalem but did not give Jerusalem back to the nation to serve as their national capital. Shortly after this, Darius uh, set a decree up in 520 BC that simplified um, or simply confirmed Cyrus's edict. Then we had a decree from um, Anthraxius, uh, the first of uh, 457 BC, for the first time granted autonomy of Judah, and if we add 490 years to the 457 BC, we come up with basically the time that Christ was on the planet. Okay, so this is extremely important. Then we had this um, in Thraxius, I'm probably saying it wrong. He sets up a second degree on March 4th at 445 BC. Now, this is extremely important as we move through Daniel's prophecy because it, it brings us all to a very specific date as we move forward here. And so, Daniel indicates that after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. So, this is extremely important. This is where there's this gap of time between the death of Jesus and the last seven week period of time. So that first period of time between the 49 years and the 434 years ends up being basically uh, 483 years. And I'm going to show you that as we move down here. Then you have your last seven years or the last week as you move into um, the, last, uh, the latter days or the last Shemitah cycle. So... He's telling you that after 62 weeks, you already had your seven weeks up here. Okay, you got the seven weeks. Then you got the three score and two weeks, which he ends up reiterating down here. He wants you to understand this. So you have three score and two weeks, and then Messiah, or Jesus, will be cut off. Because why? He's crucified. Then he's going to be resurrected. And then we're going to see a second coming as we move forward here. But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come 
shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. That should tell you abomination of desolation would happen at the very end. And so he's trying to give you this time of his cutoff, his crucifixion, to the very end where we'd see desolations or abomination of desolation on the Temple Mount. We know that Antichrist only gets a period of 1260 days, so this would happen in the middle of that period of time between um, the signing of the Treaty of Death between the nations um, against Israel and the Feast of Trumpets of 2029, September 10th. So you'd have this gap of 1260 days or 42 months or three and a half years. And that is the only time that uh, Antichrist gets power is for that specific period of time. As indicated many times in the Bible, he only gets um, 1260 days of power. And so he talks about confirming this covenant with many for one week. I'm guessing, in my opinion, it's a covenant because you have Israel under massive duress and under siege at that moment in time. They're not in a good condition. You also have an exodus of the third of the Jews prior to the Antichrist coming down on the ground. And so two-thirds of the Jews have perished as well as one-third of the remnant has been removed. And so you have this covenant signed with the nations against the remaining Jews and the countries that support the Jews and Israel. And in the midst of this week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So I tried to break this down so it would make more sense, and hopefully I can make sense of it for you. Um, because this is very complicated and a lot of people struggle with the 70 weeks of Daniel, how that might affect the Jubilee years and the Shemitah cycle all at the same time. And how that will affect you as you move into latter days. So I wanted to bring these uh, points up to your attention so hopefully it makes a little more sense. So you have from the time of the uh, commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince there shall be seven weeks or 49 years and three score and two weeks which is 62 weeks or 434 years the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome time you're talking about tribulation great tribulation there would be a total of 69 weeks total if you take the seven weeks up here times seven that gives you 49 years if you take the three score weeks and two weeks which is 62 weeks times seven that gives you 434 years if you take the seven weeks plus the 62 weeks, that gives you a total of 69 full weeks. If you take the 69 full weeks times seven, that gives you 483 years with the last seven years on the end, as you can see down here. So after the three score and two weeks or the 62 weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. And so after... Those 62 weeks, so you'd actually be at seven or 69 weeks completed, he would be cut off and crucified. Then you would have this gap of period of time that would take you into the latter days, which would be the last seven years. Okay, that's how this works. And I know it, it seems dysfunctional because you have a period of time where Jesus has come off and then he comes back at the end of time. And so you need to realize there's this gap of period of time. And he tells you that because he tells you he cuts that period off and then reapplies it to the end or latter days where you have a seven year final period of time. So if you take the 49 years plus the 434 years, that gives you 483 years plus seven final years gives you the 490 years so that would be your 70 weeks 
times 7, which would be 490 years completed based on Daniel uh, 9, 24 through 27. Okay. So in my opinion, based on my research, I believe there is a cutoff between 30 AD and September 27th of 2022, which is the last seven year of, of the Shemitah cycle, or the very first day of that start of that Shemitah cycle, of that seven year Shemitah cycle. And that Shemitah cycle runs between September 27th of 2022 and September 9th of 2029 and then like I say when you get to this last date of September 9th of 2029 which is um, Tishri 1 which is the very beginning of the prophetic year that would then start you into 2030 also cut the fall feast off into the marriage cycle and into the millennial period. On September 27th of 2022, we start the new Jewish year, or Tishri 1, on the prophetic calendar, which would be the very first day of the year 2023. Seven years from September 27th, 2022, would end of, it would be the end of the Shemitah cycle and would end up on September 9th of 2029, and that would then take into the new year of 2000. Uh, 30 or Tishri uh, 1. So then if you think about it, you have this gap or period of time between 30 AD and 2030 AD or your last 2,000 years or period of time. So you have 4,000 years between Adam and Jesus and 2,000 years between the death of Jesus to the latter days or the end of the Shemitah cycle of September 27th or September 9th of 2029 which would take you into 2030. So you have between uh, 30 AD and 2030 AD or your last 2000 years. So the seven-year Shemitah cycle, the 50-year Jubilee cycle, and the 70 weeks of Daniel all work together to give you a clearer optic of God's plan and the timing of these events as we go into the future. We talked about how April 8th of 2024 would be the end of the last Jubilee. You would start the new Jubilee in uh, Nissan 1 of 2025, which is March 30th, as indicated here. You also had that lunar eclipse on April 8th of 2024, and we talked about all those events that happened on that very specific day. As we finished those four uh, lunar eclipses, uh, total lunar eclipses, and we moved into 24, and you can see what's happening in 2024. It's just getting really ugly out here, guys. I'm just saying, if you can't see it, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you at this point. Um, Israel and Iran are getting ready to go down, and uh, Iran has potential nuclear capacity as well as Israel does. So this is this could get really ugly, but I don't think they're going to radiate the Middle East, so I don't think that's going to be the extreme problem at the very beginning um, Israel or uh, Turkey is going to come down and um, help all these proxies defeat Israel through a conventional war uh, to begin with um, to the point Iran is absorbed and then they bring tenfold nations um, back against Israel uh, through Ezekiel 38 and 39 prophecy um, approximately around March of 2026 as I've indicated on the paradigm of the 2030 uh, chart that I have out here. And when you get into this March 30th of 2025 which would start the new Jubilee year which is on Nissan 1 then I have to bring you back to Ezekiel 26 1 because there's a date stamp here that indicates that we would see potentially an attack by Turkey on Tyre, Lebanon around March 30th of 2025 based on that timestamp that I have down here. So you can see that 
because it indicates in Ezekiel 26, in uh, I'm using the King James Version here, that in the 11th year of the first day of the month, so you're talking about Tishri or uh, Nisan 1, that in the 11th year of Zedekiah, which in this case, if you look at the paradigm of the modern day, three modern day kings that I've been giving you, which is the paradigm of 2030, three kings of the past reflect three kings of today. If you look at this king named Zedekiah, he reflects Reuben Revlin. Reuben Revlin was in position between 2014 and 2021 because there's a seven year period of time that they're in leadership. And so the 11th year of his reign would be 2025, the very first day of the month, which is Nisan 1 of 2025 is March 30th. That's interesting because that starts your new Jubilee cycle and potentially through this prophecy of Daniel or Ezekiel 26 verse 1, it indicates potentially an attack of the date of Tyre, Lebanon through Turkey. So you could potentially see a siege on that. And I've talked about how if you look at Alexander the Great's movements, Turkey will come into this game around January and invade Syria. They will enter uh, Lebanon around March, February, March, and by the time we get to March 30th of 2025, we will see Tyre, Lebanon under full siege. That siege completes around July of 25, and you, then they go through Israel down into Palestine around October of 25, based on the paradigm of 2030 that I've been explaining to you. So we would see then uh, Tyrus um, being attacked and then we would see um, she is broken and then we see an attack on Israel. That would be your first siege before they go into Palestine. Then they go into Egypt. Then they go back to Tyre. This is Turkey I'm talking about. So let me go over that real quick um, before I confuse everybody. So when Turkey comes down into this game, as I've explained many, many times, and so when you look at Alexander the Great's movements and how he went through the Middle East in approximately a year and a half, I believe it will mimic almost exactly what Turkey's getting ready to do in the future, okay? This is a history lesson getting ready to play out. So when Turkey comes down into Syria and they go down into Tyre, so when they come down into Syria, they, they do this around January. So I'm looking at January 2025. When they get to Tyre, Lebanon, you can see between January and July, you see an attack on Lebanon. When you go to Ezekiel 26 verse 1, it talks about March 30th of 2025 being that original siege and that would end around July of 2025. Then Turkey drives through Israel down into Gaza, into Palestine around October. So you have the first siege of Israel approximately around July to October. Also a potential capture of Isaac Herzog. You have a secondary leader or his son potentially based on verbiage in the Bible being placed in for approximately three months. Uh, 10 days and then he's removed and then Zedekiah which is Reuben Revlin is placed into position for 18 months and so that would then take you back to the second siege and so what's going to happen is once um, Turkey goes from Tyre through Israel down into Gaza, Palestine, they end up in Egypt, they get stopped through resistance they decide they have to pull their armies back because they're having distress in the north, which are the Kurds. So they leave a sixth of their armies behind. They come back to Tyre, Lebanon. They go all the way across to Erbil, Iraq, or the Battle of Gagamel, which happens around October. And then they dump the Kurds all the way down to Shush, Iran, where you have the Battle of the Persian Gate around January of 2026. Okay, this is Daniel 8. 
and once the Kurds align with Persia and Turkey smashes them, that would then complete Daniel 8. Once as Iran is uh, destroyed, they're absorbed into Ezekiel 38 and 39, and then Turkey brings ten full nations back against Israel by around uh, February, March of 2026, based on the paradigm of 2030 and the charts that I've been showing you. So I just wanted to bring all these dates and things to your attention. How God builds all these connections in the Bible. They give you very specific information. And if you apply them to the Jewish calendars, realize that three kings of the past reflect three kings of today. The and then you can actually date stamp this stuff. It builds what I call a paradigm chart. This paradigm chart is a real-time chart that takes you through real-time events that are happening right now. You're approximately right here, okay, on um, just after the Feast of Trumpets on October uh, 3rd and uh, 4th of uh, 2024. We're walking into uh, Yom Kippur on October 12th here. So just realize... Um, we're at this very point in time of the chart. As you move into the next couple months here, I believe on January of 2025, we're going to see Turkey break out and do an invasion into Syria, which will then end up with an attack into Lebanon and an attack on Tyre, Lebanon, around March 30th of 2025, which is around the time that Ramadan ends. What's the other interesting point about this March 30th uh, date is when you go to the signing of the death of the seven-year treaty with the nations against Israel and the nations that um, support Israel um, through, um, you know, the Islamic groups are going to sign this treaty against us or anybody that supports Israel. Um, that also happens on March 30th. So we seem to have these March 30th dates that keep popping up. And um, so I just want you to be aware of all these different connections and how this stuff all might uh, line up. And uh, it's going to get interesting out here, guys. This attack from Israel onto Iran or vice versa, however this goes down, my guess is Israel will... Um, launch a fairly substantial strike on Iran and its proxies which will then force Iran and its proxies to do some type of retaliatory strike because this is all about power over there and they don't want to show weakness and so Iran is going to have to retaliate. The question will be what does Israel attack and how much damage and how ex how wide of birth are they going to deal with this? Are they going to hit the proxies? Is that going to affect Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, um, Arab groups, as well as um, Iran itself? They could launch missiles directly into Iran, so that could be a major um, escalation um, as this all goes down. And we have that uh, correlation of dates uh, to the Sabbath of October 12th of 2024, um, which is this Saturday, and that correlates with the uh, Yom Kippur War of 1973 and the oil embargo. So you've got all that potential uh, destruction coming up, and if you see those oil prices start to move up, as we already are in the last month, you can see oil has moved up tremendously. It's gone from like $66, $67 to $75, $76. There is inflation. There's your inflation right there. If this war breaks out, Iran gets hit, especially their facilities, or Iran decides to lock down the Strait of Hormos, this is going to change these prices. And you're going to see $100. $150 a barrel oil overnight and your gas pump prices will be twice what they are right now. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but that's probably the trajectory that we're heading down. So get your oil in your lamp, folks. Get right with God. Repent. Find the open door. Find Jesus. 
this is the most important thing I can tell you is unless you get right with Jesus, find that open door, which is the Son of God, it won't matter because he is the only way through this open door. You have to believe in the Son of God. And if you don't, then you probably not end up in a good place. So everybody be safe out there. Um, the election cycle's coming up. Things are getting ready to break over in the Middle East. And the markets are also melting down at the very same time. So um, we'll just see how all this turns out. God bless. Be safe.